Fans, welcome again to another edition of the Great North Wrestling Podcast on TheHannibalTV.com. My name is Jack Kilby, Executive Vice President of Great North Wrestling, and I am pleased to welcome a man who has had a very distinguished career across numerous organizations from the UWF, World Class, Jim Crockett Promotions, NWA, ECW, and amongst others, the one, the only, the legendary Jack Victory. Jack, thanks for coming on tonight, sir. Um, it, my pleasure, Jack. Um, uh, anybody that has the uh, the same first name as me is uh, always welcome. That's that's tremendous. I, I was going to bring that up, but uh, you beat me to it, and I, I would agree. I wanted to, to uh, give the fans an update uh, in terms of our plan to have you brought into Great North Wrestling. We were going to have a show in September in Renfrew, Ontario. That's now been uh, rescheduled, but due to some additional logistical complications, we're, we're going to be bringing you into Great North Wrestling in the new year, 2024. Fans, stay tuned to this channel for more information on that one. But the match will remain the same. And that match will be yourself against the Blood Hunter, a man who has faced many ECW legends in the past and uh, has a reputation for being hardcore. My thinking as the booker and matchmaker of Great North Wrestling is what better individual out there today than Jack Victory to come in and answer the challenge. I want to get your thoughts on wrestling for us in great north wrestling the potential match that's going to happen and uh the last time i believe when we spoke uh, a few months ago it's been quite some time since you wrestled in canada correct that is correct yeah i mean i don't get me wrong um when we go to canada we have a blast in canada i mean it's uh it, it is a great country um I've wrestled all over the world, and uh, Canada probably holds uh, one or two uh, places in my heart for uh, actual uh, wrestling. Um, and, and then, and then the after uh, after matches curriculum. Um, be, yeah, very, very, very great. Uh, it's a great country. Do you do you have any? I, I know you're familiar with uh, the work of uh, the Blood Hunter and how uh, you know he has a reputation. I believe Kevin Sullivan earlier this year, in um, respect to a match with Cowboy James Storm that he uh, came out victorious on, referred to him as as the most uh, dangerous man in professional wrestling today. The in terms of just the the extents that he goes in, in the ring and outside of the ring. Do you, do you have any thoughts on given all your hardcore matches and, and background of how you will fare against the blood hunter when that match goes down? You know, I've, I've wrestled some of the uh, top legends in this uh, profession. Um, and saying that watching his performance, I mean, it's like, it's like uh, he, he's a badass. He really is a badass, and uh, I, you know, I'm not coming up there to wrestle. I'm going to come up there to fight. My, uh, you know, you could tell, you could ask so many people. Um, I I might not have the best win win loss record in the ring, but I I'm undefeated in bar fights. So when I come up there, I'm not going to come up there for an arm bar. I'm not coming up there, uh, you know, to do a hip toss. I'm coming up there for a fight. And um, the Blood are going to, he, he's going to get a fight. Well, I for one, and I know the fans are very much looking forward to this. We are going to make this happen in 2024. So once again, stay tuned to the Hannibal TV for the updated information regarding that encounter. But before we get into some uh, questions that fans have sent via social media. Phil is asking, do you remember sitting at the bar in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, and a seagull bird flew in and landed on my friend and you yelled, buy that man a drink, circa 98, 
Oh, I, I don't remember that exact. I've been in so many bars. <laughs> I mean, uh, people, people, people don't realize that uh, back in the day we used to we used to do eight shows a week. So we we've been in eight different bars a week. So that's a lot of bars to uh, try to remember. So um, I don't remember that exact uh, incident, but um, I'm sure it happened. It sounds uh, it sounds entirely plausible. In in '84, you debuted uh, in uh, the UWF, the Universal Wrestling Federation, under uh, Mr. Bill Watts. Do you have any uh, memories in terms of that uh, that experience, and and definitely any stories that you might have with respect to Bill? It, it was actually Mid South Sports. Um, okay, it was, it was before before they went to D- UWF. Um, I, I graduated high school in 1982, um, started wrestling in New Jersey, um, with a bunch of local, with a lo- bunch of local talent, um, never went to wrestling school. Oh, I was self-taught. Um, I, 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 I really clicked with a group uh, of guys and, you know, a, a lot of your fans are going to know the names when I spit them out, Ted Petty, um, DC Drake. Eddie Miranda, um, Easton, Pennsylvania is where I actually made my home for about a year. Um, made some tapes, sent them all over the country. Um, back in the day, uh, a lot of these kids nowadays, we didn't have these fancy phones. We didn't, we actually had videotapes, uh, that we, we had to send out, um, sent them out all over, all over the country. That's when territories, uh, existed in the states um you know you had florida championship wrestling world class you had mid-south you had uh you you had the nwa you had all kinds of uh different territories and i sent my tapes everywhere and uh bill dundee was the um was the booker for watts um and uh out of the blue he called me and he goes you know i would like i would love to fly you in and uh and, and have a tryout. And, um, so I was like, you know, you, you know, you're 18 years old and you're like freaking out that, um, um, somebody, uh, actually acknowledged, uh, the, the tapes and, and your matches. Uh, so they flew me into Houston. We did a, two shows that day. We did a Houston show and I, and I think it was probably around Dallas or somewhere, maybe Shreveport. Um, they flew me in, um, Oh God! I flew uh, flew in, wrestled Sonny King. I don't know if you remember Sonny King, but uh, yes, I do. Yeah, very, very, uh, very great talent. Um, first match, of course. Um, wrestled him both both towns. Uh, they flew me home, uh, and I go, oh God! I was so green, <laughs> so green back then. Um, but uh, it, it was like a month and a half later. Um, Bill called me back and he goes, "You know, uh, we're gonna we're gonna fly you in, and you, this is your starting date." And I was, you know, I was like crazy. Um, but I was wrestling under a different name than Jack Victory back then. And Bill goes, uh, "You know, I'm, I have to change your name, and uh, this is your name." And boom, he gave me Jack Victory, and uh, it's stuck ever since. And uh, that's why we're talking right now. Yeah, absolutely, and and what a what a uh, mind he was, and and still is. A fan is asking, uh, did you ever work on uh, AWA shows? I guess uh, ever. No, unfortunately, you know, when when you're in the business and you're making money in the business, you 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 try to stay in the business. You know what I'm saying? So. I was doing great in mid south and I was doing great in world class. Um, um, eventually, I went to the NWA and and did really well there. I I was born and raised watching Florida Championship Wrestling, and my goal was to get there, um, but never never did. You know, um, when I grew up, I grew up in New Jersey and. Um, my cousins and my uh, my aunts and uncles they lived in West Palm Beach, uh, uh, Florida, and uh, 
every summer I would go down to her and uh, hang out. And uh, me and my cousin Eugene used to go to the West Palm Beach Auditorium and watch Dusty um, every Monday night. Uh, ticket. I, I tell people every you know tickets used to be like six dollars for uh, front row seats, and uh, it, it it was the best. I mean, it was amazing. And and you know when you're a young kid watching wrestling and um, you're saying to yourself, I want to do this. I want to do this. And, you know, 99% of the people, you know, it never happens, but uh, fortunately it, 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 you know, it, it clicked, you know, and uh, I was, I had the opportunity to do it for a living. Absolutely. Uh, a fan on social media sent me a question wanting to get your memories of, that uh, excellent team you had with Hollywood, John Tatum, with uh, Missy Hyatt in, in the mix. Yeah, we, we just, I mean, it's so funny that uh, we just did a benefit for uh, Black Bar in, um, outside of uh, Dallas uh, this past weekend. And um, I got to see Wild Bill Irwin. I got to see um, um, Gary Young. Uh, actually, Iceman King Parsons showed up. And of course, my uh, my boy uh, Johnny was there, and um, we haven't seen it, each other in probably twenty years. Um, and um, it was it was just wow. such a blast, it, you know. It was such a blast to uh, to see him talk about all our old matches and everything. And uh, he he was uh, he was a hard person to <laughs> to get along with, but. Um, what what a great partner then uh you you had uh, uh an interesting period where you became part part of uh the hot stuff international faction with with eddie gilbert and uh what what a um what a career that man had and and uh mind for the business what were your impressions when when you're working with him did you see that that uh shrewd uh, sense for professional wrestling, the art of professional wrestling that in later years he's been, he's been credited as having you when, when you're in this business and you worship this business and you, um, you take this business to your heart, you see the guys that actually have a mind for this business that, that blows you away. Um, I mean, the things that he would come up with, the the uh, the angles, all that stuff, just 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 unbelievable um, mind for this business. Did you when uh, when you were a part of that uh, that uh, faction? Did did you have uh, any idea that uh, you know for for not the the most lengthiest period of time but but it would become something that fans to this day still recall uh, quite uh, fondly you, you know wrestling fans aren't stupid you know they're they're not dumb they know they know good talent they know um they know you know they know the hard workers they know the people that you know, give it their all. Um, and, and, and I understand why that legacy is always, you know, somebody always said, comes up to me at these wrestling conventions and goes, Oh, I remember back then when you were with hot stuff and blah, 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 you know, because they, it clicks in their head that, you know, um, it was good. It was good stuff back then. Yeah, for sure. And that's why we're talking about it all these years uh, later. You also uh, worked, uh, moved on to world-class championship wrestling in a period that was uh, not exactly the peak, but still, uh, you know, quite uh, well in terms of uh, exposure with, with the television product that was very, uh, you know, revolutionary for sure under any, uh, any measure you won the TV title and the, the tag belts uh, again with uh, Hollywood Tatum. Yeah. What uh, what sticks out in your mind in, in terms of this period in Dallas with the Von Erich uh, mania still um, still a factor or any highlights that you can think of off the top of your head? 
you know, coming, starting the business when I was 18 years old and, and going into the business and actually starting with Bill Watts and, and doing literally eight shows a week um, and, and then going to world class, it was almost like a day off. It was, it was, um, they did five shows a week, you know, Mondays was in, I mean, uh, Mondays was in Fort Worth. And then Fridays were in Dallas at the Sportatorium, which was freaking amazing. Um, and then we did a bunch of um, different different spot shows all the way around. And the Von Erichs were like God walking on water in in Texas. I mean, if if one of the one of the boys was on the show, it was a sellout. No no questions asked, sellout. And um, it, it was just. It was a break from working so hard and so for so many towns to to almost get a you know a vacation uh, to the business, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. A fan uh, is asking here a, a question that we're we're going to get to, or, or rather a tenure that we're going to get to, asking what it was like wrestling in in the good old Philly Civic Center. When you were in the NWA, when you had your run, being from New Jersey, I I know how how brutal um, the fans are in Philadelphia. If you uh, if you don't bust your ass, they're they're basically going to boo you out of the building. But um, you know, we we had a uh, love hate relationship with um, with fans in uh, Philadelphia. Great town for sports. Great town for wrestling. Um, when I, when I went, got out of retirement and went back to the ECW and we did the, uh, ECW arena, um, the, the electric in that, in that building was, you know, by far the top of, of, of my wrestling career. Yeah. As a, as a fan who was lucky enough to uh, be there during that time frame, I, I can uh, most uh, certainly ag agree with that. We're, we're going to talk about ECW in a bit, but a fan sure. uh, is asking a question, uh, your thoughts on Paul Heyman. And if I could add to that, are, are you surprised that uh, the man has had uh, the longevity that he's had and, and definitely ascended to, uh, you know, aside from the, the uh, the creative and the promoter, but to be one of the the top in the in the discussion of top three managerial talents of all time. No, I mean Paul is you love him or you hate him. Um, I I love him to death. Um, he's you know he's helped my career tremendously. Um, he brought me he brought me back into the business. Um, a lot of people, you know, hate him, but 90% of, of the boys respect him and like him. I mean, uh, his mind is, is incredible to the business. In, in the 80s, the late 80s, you moved on to uh, Jim Crockett Promotions, the NWA, and uh, first uh, began the Jacko victory uh concept and the team with uh rip uh morgan how, how did you get the booking with uh with crockett and and how did that particular pairing come together before me and rip started um i got a phone call from dusty Rhodes. um he goes uh, we're we're doing we're doing things with uh the russians uh nikita and ivan and my partner that when I went in there was the Russian assassin number one. So Dusty called me and he goes, would you like to be Russian assassin number two? Um, we would love to bring you in and tag you against uh, Nikita and Ivan. And um, I was in Texas still, and it was getting stale out there. Um, if you're in the business and you know the business, uh, sometimes you, you got to move. And, um, and I was like, Dusty, hell yeah. So, he brought me in as the uh, Russian assassin number two, and uh, we ran that gimmick for uh, with Paul Jones for about a year, and um, that's how I broke into the NWA. Um, after you know, after the Russian assassins is when uh, uh, 
Angel of Death, which was Russian assassin number one, he he um, um, he pissed somebody off and uh, he uh, he left uh, the NWO, and that's when uh, when I started with Rip. Gotcha. In terms of of that um, that uh, I got the uh, order out here, but I was going to ask you about uh, the Russian assassin deal, but. In terms of your tenure working with Paul Jones, do, do you think that that he doesn't um, get the the credit that that he deserves as a manager and is is un, unfairly uh, relegated in terms of yeah, how he, folks he, view him? Yeah, he he definitely should be uh, absolutely top five managers, um, uh, interviewers. I mean. It, even if you don't like him as a manager, I mean, his interviews were spot on and like perfect, you know, and nowadays, you know, um, back in the day when I broke in, if you opened up a, a show talking, I mean, it was, it was like, it was like a cardinal sin. Now, now they open up shows um, and they talk for 20 minutes. They don't even wrestle anymore. You know, it, it's the craziest thing ever. So I was never a gifted talker. Um, so Johnny always, Johnny always did most of the talking. Paul Jones did most of the talking, um, uh, you know, and um, yeah, Paul Jones, super cool guy, super cool guy, super, super manager, super. Uh, we, we had some really great, great matches with the Nikita uh with the Koloffs. Yeah, and uh, a heck of a wrestler in his own right uh, as well. What what was your relationship like? I know you you mentioned him uh in terms of um, you know, creatively and and how you worked with uh, Dusty Rhodes who had, you know, quite a long run as uh the uh the booker for Mr. Crockett. Mm. They they named the the private jet after him. They the private Crockett's private jet was called Stardust. So that's gonna that's gonna tell you right there that um they loved Dusty. I love. I mean I mean growing up as a uh, young little buck teenager watching Dusty. I mean he, he was the man. I mean you know I'm gonna argue till I'm dead that. Dusty is the man. He's the number one, number one baby face seller. I mean, he number one baby face uh, interviewer. Um, he was the man. Absolutely. A fan on social media asked uh, about, um, and I do remember ordering this pay-per-view uh, in 1989, you replaced Dennis Condry uh, in the the new Midnight Express at the Chi Town Rumble pay per view against Cornette's uh, Midnight Express. How how did you get? Uh, I remember it was a bit of a shock at the time. How did you get tapped for that particular assignment? I, I, to this day, I still don't know. Um, uh, somebody pissed somebody off. Somebody pissed somebody off, and and it, it dropped in my lap. Um, a lot of people don't realize that. I wrestled twice on that pay-per-view, which never, it was unheard of back in the day, but I think I wrestled Michael Hayes as the Russian assassin and they go pop the hood off. You're going to wrestle with, uh, with the midnight express because, uh, we've had, we've had some, uh, we had a shakeup and I was like, oh, okay. And that, that actually was my biggest payoff ever No way. <laughs> in the wrestling business. Yeah. Wow. Cool. In terms of uh, your in relationship, or, or or perhaps maybe that's too strong a term, but your your involvement with uh, Mr. Cornette, he I know he's uh, spoken highly of you on his on his podcast. Did you did you have any uh, thoughts on uh, his uh, promo ability versus uh, Mr. Heyman's and that whole angle, or did this just kind of blindside you at the time, Jimmy? I mean. He's he's in my top ten of 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 he's he's him and Heyman are, are like neck and neck with with brains to this business. Um, when when I broke in young, um, 
they they were they were full full blown into a uh, uh, into a uh, feud with the um, Rock and Roll Express. And uh, they were doing the cake gimmick, and you know, back in the day when Watts uh, did TV, it was in Shreveport. Uh, at the, you know, it was it was like um, incredible. And and I'm not gonna lie, I was a mark before I was you know basically a wrestler. And um, Jimmy, uh, uh, mad mad respect to him. Um, uh, great guy. Betrayed by Sins is asking if you ever got paid for the ECW video game in the early 2000s. No. <laughs> no. No, we got, a free, we got a free game. <laughs> I, the, somehow that doesn't uh, fit the, uh, the royalty uh, spectrum one would yeah, think. Yeah, no, we got a free, we got a free uh, cheat cheat thing and I, I still have it uh, it's somewhere in my uh it's somewhere in my wrestling convention uh collection but um no never uh we never got royalties uh, we'll we'll go down uh, and talk again about uh, ECW some more but did did you have uh given your your tenure in the company there at that time frame did you did you have some of the uh, the pay issues that uh, the other uh, workers did it was, well, when I broke my leg, when I broke my knee, um, I went behind the scenes and started doing booking, uh, not booking, not what Paul does booking wise, not booking shows or anything, but um, doing promotional work, flying to cities, getting shows set up and all that stuff. So uh, he, I never really had a problem with my pay. Because I lived, I, I basically lived on the road with a sign guy, um, with um, with sign guy, and we did promotions for uh, ECW. A fan asked uh, kind of an interesting question about your um, involvement in the royal family stable with uh, Lord Littlebrook. And asked specifically about memories of working uh, Masa Saido and Muda in the 1990 Starcade uh, tag tournament, Pat O'Connor tournament. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was our beginning of our fall. Um, Rip, Rip is, was Butch Miller's nephew from the Bushwhackers. Um, that's how we, we actually got together is because me, me and uh, with Luke and Butch, um, when I was their flag bearer back in the day, um, we we always stayed tight and uh rip uh was one of i mean awesome 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 uh tag partner um but he he was also a uh, citizen of new zealand so he uh he really missed uh being home and uh they really never gave us that push to keep him here you know what i'm saying um mm -hmm. it was always it was Booker after Booker after Booker after Booker at the NWA. The NWA, when when they sold out um, to TBS, it was a effing mess. You know, it there was Bookers after Bookers and people just going this way and going that way. It was a disaster. And and uh, Rip comes up to me one day and he goes, "Me and Janine, we're." we're going to go back home, dude. <laughs> we're, uh, we're getting out of the business. It's just a mess. And, um, and, and that's when I, you know, actually stepped away from the business for a couple of years and, uh, did my own little thing in Atlanta. And, um, yeah, I mean, to this day, he, he is, uh, he is one of my, uh, best tag team partners and Lord Littlebrook, they should have pushed that gimmick. They really should have. You know, they, yeah. they bought, they bought all them costumes. Uh, they paid probably, I think it was like $10,000 for our, our gimmick costumes. Um, but then they changed Booker, you know, and then the Booker that came in went, uh, uh, you know, and never pushed us. And um, it was, uh, it was frustrating. 
Um, the power of the pencil is very frustrating in the business. And, uh, you know, you can ask any of the boys if, if you're not on the side of the lead and you're inside of the uh, eraser, um, it's, it's going to F with you, you know. Very true. Some talents in Great North Wrestling have found that out themselves. In in 1991, you uh, joined the Global Wrestling Federation, which I always found to be an interesting uh, phenomenon under uh, Mister the late uh, great Joe Pettisino. When when you joined the company, can you talk about uh, what the the initial expectations were, and that 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 sort of um, I guess talk amongst the 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 locker room or everyone involved in the company that there was a uh, an angel investor from Nigeria, et cetera, et cetera. Does that, that ring a bell? Yeah, it does. It does ring a bell. Um, it, the territory was, it looked promising in the beginning and, um, you know, slowly, uh, and you can ask any of the boys, um, it, it slowly fizzed out pretty quick. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think it would have worked if, yeah, it takes a lot of money, as you know, to 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 run these shows. And if if things aren't clicking, you can spend a lot of money quick, big time. Yeah, big time. What was the was the thought that Global would become uh, the uh, second coming, for lack of a, a better phrase, of, yeah, of I world think so. class? I think I think yeah. a lot of a lot of the boys that that saw the potential um saw a nether you know an, another nwa run you know another that territory uh type thing you know georgia uh, such a great uh state for wrestling um you know the carolinas uh you know you, you could wrestle seven you know seven shows a week and you know uh, be within a 300 mile radius. It, it was, it was, it was really, really cool back then. Uh, another fan wanted me to get your memories of working in the, the famous and, and now defunct sportatorium in mm. Dallas. That was cool. That was, that was a, um, that was one of my, uh, I mean, thank God I, I wrestled there. It was a, uh, Cool building, no air conditioning, um, rats probably the size of uh, little puppies. Um, just uh, and, and I don't talk rats, female rats. I, I'm talking, I'm talking little puppy rats. Uh, it, we we just talked about that at the uh, the Black Bart um, thing. One of the uh, one of the guys that came to the show, he uh, he used to cook. Um, he used to do concessions at the uh, sportatorium and he goes, man, we named that rat. I mean, there was a rat that was, that was as big as a small dog. And uh, he, uh, but, um, but the atmosphere, um, because it street level, you went down, the, the actual ring was down in the ground, you know, it went down and, um, uh, no, like I said before, no air conditioning. Um, sell out every, you know, every Friday night. It was, it was a blast. It was really cool. Yeah, I find a, a lot of the, you know, the venues that, especially the the major companies run, are are, you know, way too sanitized today and and don't have that <laughs> that flavor for sure that made you know the business enjoyable back yeah, in the day. Yeah, absolutely. In in ninety two, you and uh, Mr. Morgan worked uh, a dark uh, WWF superstars uh, shot. We did. Was there, yeah, we did. Was there any any uh, consideration that they they were going to bring you in, or uh, always wondered why you never uh, did a run in WWF? Well, Butch and Luke was there, so we basically had the same type of gimmick and, and Vince was never going to sign us to, uh, to, to do, you know, to do anything uh, that was going to jeopardize the Bushwhackers back in the day, you know, uh, Butch and Luke got us in there for, for a tryout, but I think that was just a favor, you know, just a favor. 
did you do you have any uh stories or encounters with mr mcmahon no no never um i basically talked to him maybe two or three times in my whole career you know i never uh never uh i don't have anything bad or good to say about him Aside from your your tag team shot at this uh, point in time, did you ever have any discussions with them as coming in as a single? No, no. I um, it was basically me and Rip, uh, you know, selling ourselves, and uh, it uh, you know it, it it just never really panned out. I was, you know, I was at the my later part of my career where you know. If it worked, it worked. If it didn't, you know, I was really never, I born and raised in Jersey. I, I really never had a goal to go to the WWF for, for some reason. Mm. I always liked, you know, Florida championship wrestling, the wrestling down in the South and all that stuff. So fair enough. Uh, that same uh, year you were brought into uh, Smoky Mountain and participated in uh, the the tourney to crown their first ever champions. What what was that uh, territory like coming into in its uh, embryonic stage? Yeah, I mean it was it was it was um, it it didn't last long. I mean we we uh, we went in and did our job and uh, put people over and uh, and uh, helped them uh, kick it off. I, I you know they lasted um, they lasted a pretty long time. Um, was just really never really wanted to, to move to that area and, and, and do it full time. You know, it was always, you know, you want to fly me in, I'll fly in and, you know, do somebody a favor and, um, and, and fly back out. Then in um, 98, you came into ECW and uh, were involved in a, a storyline as a, as a henchman to, uh, take care of new Jack. How did that, uh, how did that come about? And do you have memories of working with the late great Jerome Young? I was, uh, I was managing nightclubs in Atlanta. I got out of the business, got, you know, bad taste in my mouth, you know, like, like we, like I said before, um, it, you, you only go as far as that pencil, you know, if, if you're good with the booker, you're going to be pushed to the earth, uh, you know, to the moon and all that stuff. Um, so when when Rip walked away from the business, I, I stepped back and um, being a a person that went into a lot of bars <laughs> during my uh, during my wrestling, I, I met a lot of a lot of interesting people and owners and stuff like that, and I. Uh, I went to one of the owners and I said, listen, I, I'm thinking about stepping away from the business. Uh, can you, uh, can I have a job? And uh, he basically goes, oh yeah, you can manage the place. And I was like, oh, okay. I, so that was my, my run in managing nightclubs and stuff like that. And um, they, uh, they did a pay-per-view in Marietta, Georgia. And um I go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go see Pauly because I, I really love Pauly. And uh, I went to Pauly and Tommy Dreamer never met the guy, um, but just an absolute awesome person. And uh, he goes, do, do, you ever, you ever want to come back? You ever think about coming back? And uh, I go, I think about it every day. You know, I mean, it, the business until I die, you know, I'm going to be thinking about, uh, matches and 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 wrestling and you know once it's in your blood it's in your blood and um i go what what are you thinking he goes well, we want you to come in and uh and uh do this angle with uh new jack and i was like okay um packed my bags moved back to new jersey which they were based out of basically most 90 percent of the matches were up in the northeast um uh still had family up in new jersey and uh you know, I packed my bags in Atlanta and took off and uh, and uh, got in the angle with New Jack. And uh, what a what an awesome, uh, crazy ass, crazy ass boy. Uh, I mean, you you really had a fight, 
um, when you were wrestling <laughs> with him, uh, crazy, you know, diving off of two story buildings onto you on a table. And I was like, Oh, I ain't used to this crap, you know? And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, it was, uh, it was pretty cool. When, when you were, this, this angle was proposed to you. Did you have any idea of who new Jack was and his reputation? No, no, cause yeah, no, just, I'm glad you asked that question because I really never watched DCW until mm. I, you know, until I went to that show and I was like, holy crap, these, these, they, they, this ain't right. And um, I was like, man, this is like, uh, you know, Bill Watts back in the day uh, with all these gimmick matches. And um, I fell in love with it immediately. And uh, when uh, I was just so happy when they asked me uh, to come back and uh, I was like, oh, this is, yeah, this is, this is a good fit. Speaking of uh, speaking of a, a fit, a, a much has been made of the uh, the famous ECW locker room, and I always, when I have the uh, the opportunity to interview a, an original such as yourself, I ask, what was your experience like in in that environment, and was it as as crazy for you as uh, some have reported? Well, um, what did they report? <laughs> because it, it's probably all true. Um, there was a lot of uh, a lot of drinking, a lot of uh, extracurricular, uh, you know, stuff uh, happening behind the scenes. It was a um, it was not a traditional Bill Watts uh, locker room. That's for damn sure. Mm -hmm. um, we had a lot of bar fights. I mean, we uh, we had a blast. It was really cool. Yeah, that's that seems to be the the consensus, and which is I think a lot of the reason why, or one of the major reasons why the fans uh, to this day, you know, myself included, uh, look back on that as uh, a really uh, golden area, golden time in the business. Now, in in terms of your relationship with Paul Heyman, you you had contact with him in in the NWA. What what was that like during during this period? Was he uh, under uh, the visible stress that um, uh, most have talked about in this period when ECW was, you know, it had to expand the TV deal with TNN and all those financial pressures that we know about. I was more, I was more, um, I, I think I hung out more with Tommy Dreamer than I did with actual Paul. Paul would, would come in, we would bang out a show and Paul would disappear um he he was in tremendous stress uh, you know um trying to do this trying to do this we i mean we were we were selling out buildings but also the buildings when we went there and sold them out and did a show a lot of these buildings you know <laughs> did, didn't like what they saw so there was yeah. always there was always some kind of you know a, a black sheep uh ecw faction um so he he was under a lot of stress with ecw yeah so you you had an incident where where you you broke your leg uh during a, a tag match and then came while you were you were convalescing or whatnot and healing came came back on uh on air as the as the the manager of uh, steve carino and you were part of that uh that uh, very uh, uh memorable angle with the network C can you talk about that particular period and your your thoughts on how you were um contributing during that during that period when you were you were convalescing yeah, when I when I was, I think I was 19 years old, and um, I was wrestling Terry Taylor in New Orleans, and for some reason, somebody uh, that that voodoo stuff down there, I think, is true, because I was wrestling Terry Taylor when I was 19, and um, back in the day, Watts had a metal railing around the ring. So we were wrestling on the outside of the ring and Terry grabbed me and threw my head to the railing and a mark kicked the railing and it, the railing moved. So I, my head was supposed to hit the railing, but they kicked the railing and I blew out seven 
seven of my front teeth. I mean, ex my front teeth just exploded. I mean, lost seven teeth at 19 years old in New Orleans. And, um, and then years later, uh, I broke my knee in New Orleans in a pay-per-view. Uh, we, I think I was wrestling Jake the Snake and um, Tommy Dreamer. And that happened like 50, 57 seconds into the damn match. I, I, we, we started hot and heavy, and Tommy threw me over the ring, and I landed wrong, and pow. My, uh, my, I blew my knee out, and um, yeah, not, not fun. Not a good time. Um, Jason Knight, uh, rolled in and, and finished the match for me. I mean, it was, he, he was right there, uh, to help things out, but, um, yeah, New Orleans, uh, I'm cursed down there. Yeah. Sounds like it. One, uh, one of the, uh, the issues of contention for historians looking at the original ECW is that, that deal with, uh, TNN, the Nashville network, when, when this was uh, coming to fruition, uh, were there high hopes in the locker room that this was going to, along with the video game that you mentioned, and there there started to be some action figures and more merchandising? Was there was there a positivity that uh, no. this this was going to be a good thing, and how it no. turned out? No, all the boys said it was the shits, and it and it it turned out to be the shits. Everybody was uh, was, you know. Anytime you go corporate and um, with with what we had, you know, you know, T and A would go. Oh, you can't do this. You can, you know, as soon as you when as soon as they're saying you can't do this, you can't do that. It's like bullshit. You know what I mean? It's it's going to take away from what ECW was. We were basically um, f you. You know. Um, I understand why Paulie did it. I mean, I mean, you, you'd have to be a dumbass not to do it when when somebody's dangling a whole bunch of money in front of you. You know, uh, you're you're gonna you're gonna you know go with it and hopefully, yeah, 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 and do no, no, no on the on the back end. But it it, it didn't work. It didn't work. Um, you know. It, I mean, you saw ECW uh, from the from the get go, and um, when when TNA, it, it it all it all went to crap. Yeah, most definitely. In in terms of the uh, the WWE ECW, were you ever contacted to be a part of that? And part B of this question that I also asked the ECW originals is what what's your opinion on that? Was that do you think that was a, a, a blatant attempt on, on the part of uh, Vince and, and whoever the ECW critics were to, to really once and for all stamp out the, uh, the overwhelming love that the fan base has for that product yeah, and still does? I, I, yeah, I think it was a, um, I, just like what you just said, I, I think it was basically let's bring them in and all, let's squash them all you know, and get rid of that, you know, that ECW mentality and all that stuff. We were never, me and uh, Stevie was never, uh, we were really never invited up to that little faction, um, which was cool, you know. When it was over, it was over. Uh, no hard feelings. Were you, uh, aside from the, the WWE, ECW, were you, were you ever uh, involved or, or contacted to be a part of the, uh, the hardcore homecoming events or the, the, I believe it was the Shane Douglas promotion, Extreme Rising, any of those reunion shows? Um, I, I, the first couple, they asked me, but I was, I was, I was off doing my own gimmick. Um, Never really, never really got to uh, to really gel and and do that type of thing. And I think I was bitter at the time, um, and, and just let it just let it go away. Um, I, I I don't do much to this day, you know, maybe three or four things a year. Um, not saying that I'm bitter. Um, I love this business. Uh, you know, gonna gonna. <coughs> excuse me, die, uh, 
die loving this business. Um, but, but don't use the business anymore to, you know, do anything. Absolutely. Can understand that you, you <coughs> wrestled, uh, CW Anderson, uh, at the last ever ECW show. Can, can you talk about, we've heard varying reports, including from Tommy, uh, about the, the level of knowledge that folks had, um, in terms of that being the end. And I know some have commented that the, the, I understand Paul wasn't at that show, but, the the word was that he was off trying to get a, another deal in in Hollywood with another network. What was uh, your recollection of uh, that situation at the time? Did you know it was the end? No, I mean, you always you you, you always have a, a hope that it's never the end. Um, and to this day, we we never thought it was the end. <laughs> We always thought uh, Paul would pull something out of his uh, out of his hat, and uh, we would continue um, wrestling. CW um, to this day is one of my best friends. So uh, he's a uh, I don't know if you ever had him on your show. He's a uh, he's a great guy, and um, he, uh, <laughs> he he he's a fantastic worker. He I mean he looks better now than he did back in the day. Yeah, absolutely. We were originally going to uh, bring him into Great North Wrestling, but he had a, a last minute conflict. So that's something that we're we're definitely going to yeah, look I think at. Even doing a movie or something, I he he told me about that. Yep, that's how that, we're that's talking it. now is because of CW. That's right. I remember that tremendous. <laughs> in, in terms of the overall picture of of your career uh, to date, what what would you consider your your most uh, your most proud accomplishment and do you have any regrets in terms of any of the decisions that you made along the way? You, you always have regrets when you're, when you're now sitting, thinking about things, you, you always have regrets. Um, how, you know, but I, I was this, you know, young kid in, you know, uh, in New Jersey and I basically lived, um, my dream, you know, I basically lived my dream. Um, anybody that tells you, Oh my God, or I regret them, you know, it's bullshit. It, it is. Um, you know, I got to wrestle in Texas stadium. I got to wrestle in this, uh, you know, um, Bill Watts's big shows at the, um, Superdome and all that stuff. And, uh, uh, Texas stadium and, and, you know, the Texas fair and, just, uh, you know, uh, in front of, you know, 50,000 people. I mean, they do 100,000 people now. Um, but back in the day, you know, we, we did 50,000 people. That was that was a pretty damn good house uh, back in the day. So, no, I, I have no regrets. Um, uh, I, I absolutely loved, uh, loved my career, loved uh, everything I did. Well, Jack, I, I want to thank you very much again for your, your time tonight. Uh, you've been very generous with it. Uh, until we have more information about uh, your uh, involvement in Great North Wrestling, where can the fans keep up with you on social media? And do you have any particular appearances or anything to discuss at this point? I, I have a couple of shows coming up, but um, the main the main thing, if they, if they want to reach out to me, um, my Instagram is... Uh, jack victory 82 um that that's the my most uh that's the one i um basically uh answer anything uh if uh if somebody wants to reach out to me um and, and i'm looking forward to coming up uh to your territory and um and uh hang out in canada so are we. And I want to uh, once again remind the fans, speaking of Great North Wrestling, the next Great North Wrestling event will be on Saturday, November the 4th in Renfrew, Ontario, the Renfrew Reckoning. Tickets are available at ticketweb.ca. We're having the multi-time WWE Tag Team Champion Rene Dupree from the SmackDown brand on the show. Jeremy Prophet, my man, Magnum McLaren, the Canadian Heavyweight Champion, and of course, the Almighty Blood Hunter. So get those tickets at ticketweb.ca. 
Jack, do you have any uh, closing thoughts for for your fans? No, I'm just uh, just thank you for uh, hanging out with me for uh, for this hour. And uh, Jack, you uh, you take care. Well, fans, that's it. Another edition of the Great North Wrestling Podcast. Make sure you stay tuned to the Hannibal TV for updates with respect to Great North Wrestling events in the future. And we will see you next time. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Follow us on Twitter at the Hannibal TV for instant updates.